we have a tremendous opponent uh, on Sunday. I think everybody's well aware um, of of how good they are. They're 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 phenomenal. They're a legitimate uh, national title contender. I really believe that. Um, and I, I think um, Jawan has done a, an amazing job. He's continued on with this really phenomenal a run that they've had in the last 10 years. Um, you look at, you know, John's last two teams, I believe won 63 games and played on Monday night and got to a sweet 16. And I really believe that this team, uh, this current team uh, that Juwan has would, would, uh, would have won a, would have had a 30 plus win season too, if we'd had a full season. Um, he's, he's deserving of every uh, accolade. They've got tremendous, um, uh, depth and talent, and um, they've added to uh, those those younger guys that are now older livers. Um, you know, obviously, you know, retaining. I think in a lot of ways, Wagner was huge for them. Uh, the younger the younger brother because he's he's such a gifted and talented player, um, but they play. You know, honestly, they 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 t- very much take on the, I think, the personality of, of Coach Howard, and that they play smart, composed, tough, highly competitive. It's it's kind of the way that uh, I remember him playing. So um, great challenge. I know we've got to we've got to get our guys right physically um, after last night, and uh, that's been our focus here today, along with preparing for uh, for these guys. Sorry about that. We'll start off with Adam Jardy. Adam? Sorry, I lost the connection for half a second there. Uh, Chris, you, you just off the top there, you, you mentioned like trying to get healthy today. Did Seth come through the night okay? Like just how, how are you guys doing as, as a group as you've had a little time to reflect? Yeah, I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be okay. We'll, we'll, we'll know more uh, in a day, uh, but he's banged up. He and Kyle, um, We'll see. Kyle, Kyle will be. Um, I think he'll be okay, but he's he's going to need some time off between now and game time. Um, he's going to need some time off. And I thought it was interesting. A moment ago, you said how uh, Michigan, in a lot of ways, has maybe taken on some of the characteristics of of Jawan. And I know maybe your career didn't quite get to the your playing career didn't quite get to the same uh, heights as it is, but not close. <laughs> Uh, do you do you feel that your teams take on some of the characteristics of, of how you play? Do you do you see some things in how you try to approach the game as a player and, and the teams that you coach? Hope so, Adam. You know, I hope so. I hope I, I think that's always, um, you know, that's always the case in a lot of ways, whether you you want it to be the case or not. That that is uh, typically the case is they are in some ways going to take on their personality, but they're also going to take on the personality of, uh, I think, in uh, in a lot of ways. So I think, you know, early in my coaching career, there were certain things that I, I tried to say I wanted to be about as a coach. And, and hopefully, our, uh, in a positive way, those those guys, our, our team does that. And, um, you know, they deserve credit for that, that they've embraced it and I think believe in, in, in what we're doing. And, again, you can see great belief on – with, with Jawan's team as well. You just tell they've got great belief in what they're doing. Okay, next up, Jared Smalley. Hi, Chris. Uh, thanks for doing this, by the way. Um, you all have played against some excellent bigs already this year. You've done a nice job uh, in, in some of those matchups in particular. This is a unique game because they've got a couple of bigs, uh, Wagner and Dickinson. When I see them, at least it seems that they play well not only individually, but play well together, sharing yeah. the ball well. What is that unique threat, and, and what does that present to uh, to your big men? Well, I think it's what you see with every um, team right now that's performing at an elite level is they are an extremely unselfish group, extremely unselfish. And I think you find that thread with every, with every team right now that is playing at an elite level. Um, they've got a, a ton of weapons. You know, Hunter has really provided them. He's got great size. He's 7'2", um, and he's got really good length. Um, 
Austin Davis backs him up, and he's good and physical and uh, a challenge. Uh, but then their their wings, uh, they just have, when I say wings, you know, Wagner's in that group, uh, Livers, they're just, you know, I know those guys are on draft boards, and for good reason. They're, they're really good, good players. Um, and those guys present challenges because of their versatility. Okay, next up. Stephen Hellwagon. Hey, Coach. Uh, you know, as you look at Michigan, obviously they had the three-week hiatus, and that could have gone one of two ways for them. The first 20 minutes against Wisconsin, they didn't play very well, and then it was lights out basically after that. In studying those two games, Wisconsin and Rutgers, uh, what in your mind, and I don't know how in-depth you've just looked at those two games in the last 12 hours, but – uh, I don't know, just your thought, how are they different, better? What, what's what been the, the solution for them, I guess, dealing with having to come back from that hiatus? Well, I could probably give you a better answer when I, when I finish my, my, completely finish my, my viewing of them. Uh, but I, you, you've not seen a, you've not seen a tremendous drop off, Steve. Okay. There's not been, there's not been one of these. And I, I think you see that in a number of, of, of teams but I think the elite teams, you've not really seen much of a drop off after a COVID break uh, in the elite teams. And um, I think Baylor may be on one now or maybe coming off one. I don't know. I, I, I get lost with all that. But I, they, they'll be the same, I'm sure. Um, and, and, you know, this, you know, they, they appear to, to have honestly not, not skipped a beat from how good they were playing before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you talked about it last night, but how uncanny is it about Walker? Uh, 13 points and seven assists, I think, last night. That may have been one of the better games he's played in his two years at Ohio State when you take it all into account. Just um, for him to play, as he said after the game, with three fingers taped together. I mean, you guys, uh, somehow, some way, these veterans are, are, are finding a way to get the job done. I don't know. What, uh, what do you say about that, I guess? Well, it's hard, you know. He's a good player, really good player, and he plays to win, understands playing to win, brings great maturity, Steve. He isn't fully healthy, but uh, he's in a great rhythm right now, too. He's playing with a lot of confidence and in a great rhythm. Thanks. Okay, next up, Spencer Holbrook. Chris, when you have a guy like EJ who was in foul trouble for most of the second half and still comes away with 23 and 5, and, and when he's on the floor, it was kind of – starting to make the difference in the game there in the second half. What what do you see out of him game by game that just, just makes you more confident in his ability? He seems like he just continues to get better with each game. Yeah, he's such he's playing with such great confidence right now, and he's such a difficult matchup offensively. You know, the challenge for EJ is, you know, his ball screen defense has to improve. Um, he's got to help us more in some of those, uh, some of those areas. But he's in just such a – I mean, he is in such a tremendous confidence and, and rhythm right now offensively. And he's such a difficult matchup. And, you know, again, when we recruited him, we always envisioned that he was going to be your prototypical matchup nightmare. That's what we did. You know, we envisioned that. We just didn't know when it was going to be realized. And uh, it's, it's been realized here really quickly in Columbus. I know you've already touched on a little bit of you guys being banged up, but how do you manage that when you come off of an emotional win like that last night and then now you have to turn around and probably play the game of the year for you guys, maybe the game of the year in the entire conference? How do you manage that that level of being banged up with still having to, well, knowing that you have to prepare for a team like Michigan? Well, we got to, I mean, we got to do everything you you got to do today. We got to, we got to sleep. We got to get sleep tonight. We got to hydrate throughout the day, have to hydrate throughout the day. We got to get, our smoothies and our vitamins from our nutrition staff. Q has to do a phenomenal job, which he will, in terms of a, uh, a, a stretch recovery period in the weight room. Uh, our guys who didn't play a lot of minutes have, are going to have to do some extra conditioning, and they're going to have to embrace that. The guys that are banged up are going to have to spend time with Brad and Q. Um, we need to have a good cleanup film session uh, to learn from the mistakes we made last night. And then we've got to go to bed. We got to go to bed. We got to get to sleep early and then get ready to go tomorrow. All right, next up, Patrick Murphy. 
Chris, I feel like when when you guys play Michigan, we always ask about the rivalry, and it's different from football because you you guys tend to play more than once a year. But this year, not only is there only one scheduled game, but it's you know two of the top teams in the country. Just just how do you look at this this specific matchup in terms of that kind of school versus school rivalry? Maybe different than some of your previous years. Uh, you know, listen, I I recognize being here my fourth year. What what this what this rivalry and it really is a rivalry across every every sport here but I, I recognize what it what it is and what it means we understand and and you know what the game uh in football is and um i recognize the importance of that importance of that to our fan base um it's important to our players and i think the best way to honor a rivalry is to respect it for what it is and to try to bring your best competitive stuff to it. And uh, that's what we're going to try to do. That's what we've tried to do. They have a tremendous program. They have for a number of years now. Again, I, you know, Juwan's done a phenomenal job. John did a phenomenal job, clearly. Um, it's it just, it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous program. We've got great respect for them. You know, we we need we're going to need to 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 play our very best, and uh, I'm excited about this because we've got, you know, we've got a group that um, uh, I think really embraces the idea of playing the very best, and uh, we're, you know, we're excited about the challenge. I know our guys are, but you know, on a side note, you know, I, I do have an overwhelming thought. I I miss the fact that our fans can't enjoy these these final games here. You know, three out of four. Uh, games are going to be at home are going to be top 10 opponents. Um, you know, but, but this one in particular, I hate it for that. Our fans um, can't be in the building and I hate that for our players, but um, it's a great, great opportunity and great for college basketball. Okay. Jacob Buckeye Grove. Yeah, hey, Chris, uh, Musa Jallo last night played 20-plus minutes, scored a season-high uh, points for himself. Just what did you see for him to play an extended amount of time? Because he talked about having a strong team-first belief. Yeah, I think Musa has been great. He was great last night. You know, he and I have talked. I think there's, there's games where um, he's going to be utilized and needed, and I thought he was terrific. He's got to continue to lead the way defensively, but I thought his, offensively his cutting – uh, what was tremendous. I, I just, I love what he brought to us last, last night. And with him being one of those veteran guards, you know, how have you seen his team first mentality kind of develop from season to season? Yeah, I think that's a maturity thing. I think he's grown. I think he loves this place, loves the school, plays for the school, um, understands what that means and represents. And sometimes that takes a little bit of time, but he's, he's a really smart kid. He's a great kid. He cares about the right stuff. He's, you know, he's a joy to coach. Thanks. All right, Dan Hope, Lemon Warriors. Hey, Chris. Obviously, you know, you guys talk all the time about how tough it is to win in the Big Ten any given night. But does this Michigan team ha take it to a different level in terms of a challenge for your team? You know, I sure. You look at everything they've done, and they've they've only lost one time in, in league play. Um, and they, they've blown out a lot of people, you know, right after we Purdue beat us here, they, they got Purdue pretty good at Purdue. Um, you know, they've just been really impressive. So, um, right now, obviously you look at them and, you know, I believe what I said, they're a legitimate national title contender. And, um, you know, I think it's going to, again, it's a great challenge for us to see kind of where we're both at. Yeah, how much does it, you know, make you feel like you say they're a legitimate national championship contender? How much do you go into this game feeling like we're going to learn something about our team on Sunday? I think you love that about playing really good people. I think you love that. I mean, we learned stuff last night in last night's game, but I think you obviously, you know, you really appreciate, um, you know, that experience to, to learn kind of where you're at as a team right now as well. Um you know, last year we played a couple times and we both had really in some ways similar seasons. Great non-conferences. You know, we stubbed our toes both a little bit uh, in league play early. 
and then got in a good rhythm towards the closing stretch. And we're, I think we're both going to be around a four five or six seed. Um, so it's, you know, they were good last year. They're just, they, they've taken it up a notch as uh, this year for sure. All right, Stephen Means. Chris, given that it's only one game this year and all this other stuff, the tangibles with it, are you able to maybe tap into some of those emotions with this rivalry a little bit more than maybe in other years where you're playing them multiple times? Yeah, maybe. I, I think the um, – I think when you look at the game right now being in late February – being where both teams are ranked and only playing once in the regular season, uh, certainly you could look at it and it really builds, you know, to this. Now it is one game and we've got three more after that. Um, but uh, I, I do think all that is around this particular game, you know, makes it a fun one for college basketball and a, and a fun one for our fans. And obviously probably uh, brings more attention because we're only playing once and because of the season, uh, both both teams have had. Thanks. Okay, Brendan Gulick. Hey, Chris. Um, when when you had a chance to watch the film uh, of the game they played against Minnesota, where you know they they just had an off night, H how much of that game did you take away? Looking at Michigan, saying, "Gee, they they were really vulnerable in this area," uh, as opposed to, "Man, it was just a a tough night for them." You know, I thought I thought Minnesota was really good. One that that night, and and we know what that feels like, right? We we've been through that. I thought they were really good that night. Um, uh, they had a lot to do with, they had a lot to do with that game being where it was. You know, you always look at games like that. They have, you know, right? They haven't lost much, so you're always looking at uh, that that game and trying to see what you can figure out. You know, they had a they had a close game earlier in the conference season against Penn State, I believe, a four point game. Um, so you're looking at those things, but in that game, I think, you know, for, for whatever reason, uh, there have been games, teams that have went up to, to Minnesota and, and, and really struggled. And a lot of that is a credit to Minnesota. Let's talk about Dwayne for a second. I know he gets a lot of, uh, a lot of flack because sometimes his inefficiency on the offensive end uh, becomes a, a focal point. And I know you've, uh, semi-jokingly said he, he's going to you know, take you to an early death or something to that degree. Uh, but last night he was probably as efficient as he's been all year. And he continued to do it in a clutch fashion when EJ got in foul trouble and, and Dwayne seemed like he really stepped up in the second half. W when you see him in clutch moments, do you hold your breath or, or do you, do you just know that, you know, Dwayne kind of lives and thrives for those opportunities? Yeah, no, I think he's, he's, growing in his ability to, to make, um, make the right play late and make the right decision late and make the right decision in the guts of the game or throughout the course of the game. I think he's really grown in that area, and that's a credit to him. I think he continues to evolve as a player. His efficiency improves. Defensively, he, he was not at his best last night. Um, he's got to be better, um, but uh, he, he had an efficient offensive night for sure. All right, Colin Haas-Hill. Chris, I think a lot's going to be made of, of this game and, and, and for good reason, since you guys are both top five teams. But, you know, if you look at the way that you guys are trending and, and both recruiting, you know, it might not be the last time where there's a lot on the line. Or do you see that, the, the, you know, there's there's a lot that, that, that's going to go into this game and, and a lot that's going to be talked about in this game. But, you know, the way that you guys are, are building your programs, you and Jawan right now, that this might be not be the only one where there's big stakes. I hope so, Colin. You know, I hope so. I, I think that's great. That'd be great for, for both places. That'd be great for um, both universities. That would be great for college basketball. Um, you know, that's, I hope so. And I think that's the thing that you feel good about is that this is a February game that, that means a lot. You know, this is not an early season game, but this is a February game that means a lot. I hope so. I, I do. I do really like where we're recruiting. Uh, I like where we're at with that. Um, I know they're recruiting at an exceptional level as well. Um, so, you know, I, I hope that's the case, and I think that would be great for 
uh, for both programs, both universities. Uh, certainly, um, you know, you could look at this and say that that appears to be the case. You know, it's our job as coaches to, to make sure that we're working every day to, to provide meaningful games, you know, for, for our players, for our fans, and everybody in, in, you know, February and March. Okay, Bruce Hooley. Chris, I know you have to prepare in all different scenarios in the Big Ten road game, coming back, playing. What's the minimum amount they give you? Is it Thursday? Could you conceivably play Saturday or Sunday? What I'm getting at is what how's what's what is the difficulty of playing Thursday night road, Sunday afternoon early? Do you have enough time to do everything you want to do? Given that I know with a team like this, there's probably never enough time to do everything you want to do. No, I, I would characterize it as a quick turnaround, Bruce. And um, you know, when we were looking at at potentially, you know, the the change in the Penn State game. Um, we had initially looked at flipping and, and going there first and here second, and we almost did it. It just didn't work out. Um, you know, we did, it was, it was the only time I all year looked ahead at the calendar and the schedule and, and, and looked at, okay, how would this affect things? And I knew at that time, I, I did not anticipate an eight o'clock tip. Um, but I knew at that time it was going to lead to a quicker turnaround than would be ideal. But th there's, you know, there's no excuses. We, everybody has quick turnarounds in this, in this business. We've got to, we've got to figure out a way to be our best come Sunday. Steve Peichel said last night that he thinks Michigan's the best team he's seen in the big 10 in five years. And he talked about their defense. And I know when, fans and perhaps media focus on this matchup you, the focus is on you know what do you do about their offense with their bigs and stuff like that what challenges do they present defensively and can you go through how you prepare for another team defensively I think that's harder for fans to envision what you do to prepare for a defense they're an elite defensive team elite and they were elite defensive team I believe and was it 2019 one of John's teams that went to the Sweet 16, and then the year before, his team that went to the final game and played, I believe, Villanova was an elite defensive team, too, I believe. So those were two elite defensive teams. This is an elite defensive team as well. Uh, they are phenomenal, Bruce, just phenomenal on that end. They're big, they're long, they're physical. And for Steve to say that, that is a big statement. You know, the best team he's seen in, what do you say, four years or five years? five years. That is, that is a big statement uh, because you, you know, you've had Michigan state's been to a final four, you know, Purdue was a kind of a tough play away from another final four. Um, you know, you've had some incredible teams come through here. So it's a quite a, quite a thought there. All right. Andy Evans. Chris, we've uh, we've talked to you about you know COVID and the fact that there are no fans. Um, yet in your career, you are two and zero at home. Going even back the last five years, the Buckeyes are three and zero against the Wolverines when playing here in Columbus. Um, do you think that there is still going to be some sort of home court advantage for Sunday afternoon's game? And would you like to – would this be the kind of game where if you had fans available, this is definitely the one where you would like to, to see the seats filled for this kind of game coming oh, up Sunday? Man. There's nothing I'd like more. More. I mean, outside of world peace, I don't think there's anything I'd like more than than uh, to be able to open this thing up for, um, you know, for Sunday's game. It'd be the hottest ticket uh, in a long, long time, right? It just would. Um there's not many opportunities this late in the year that provide uh, this type of a matchup. Now, hopefully, you know, both teams can perform at a high enough level where it's an entertaining game. Um, but um, it would just be a tremendous experience for us. I hate it for our fans. I do. I hate it for our players and our fans. Uh, it's reality. I understand it. I'm not taking any issue with it uh, at all. I understand it. But not having fans, I hate that for our players and for our fans. 
do you think that there is still going to be some sort of home court advantage for you guys? It's minimal. It's minimal, if anything, to be honest with you. From what I've experienced, it's very, very minimal. Slight, if anything, um, it's just there's not much to it. You know, it's just not much. Uh, I wish I wish I could say because we we have three top ten opponents coming in. I wish I could say it's what it normally is. It's just it's a negligible advantage, I think, in in a lot of ways. Um, slight, if anything. All right, thanks, Chris. And we'll finish up with uh, Tony Gerdeman. So I think you guys have like seven or eight players that can give you. 10 to 15 points on any given night. Sometimes they'll give you, you know, zero to four, depending on who it is. Do you like having that many guys that can produce, or would you rather have, I know what I'm getting every night from these three or four guys. Do you, and which is more difficult for, uh, for teams to defend, do you think? I think depth can help you through the course of a conference season. Okay. Because, you, you, you know, you go on the road like we did last night. We needed a variety of guys to step up. I don't know how much depth really helps you in, in an NCAA tournament setting necessarily. You've seen teams uh, – some teams play a lot of guys. Carolina typically has. And you've seen like Villanova run a seven- or eight-man rotation and win two national championships in the last ten years. So I don't, I don't know that that necessarily helps you in, in terms of a tournament. But I do think over the course of a – what we now play, 20 league games, depth can help you. Do I have a preference? You know, I'm still trying to figure that out a little bit. You know, I just think with this year's team, it's best for this year's team right now uh, to continue to play the number of guys we're playing.